Oscar Oberländer. Welcome back to my channel. Now, as I mentioned in the previous video uh, that I'm going to merge the Habitat onto the chassis, the truck chassis very soon. Therefore, I had to take care of the truck because I had not hooked up my fuel gauges from the diesel tanks to a meter inside the cab. I needed to do that because I need to run extra wires and stuff. So that's what I did. You know, if I would put the box on first then I have really difficult access to uh, the wiring stuff and also uh, difficult access to, for example, the uh, drying, drying cartridge, you know, like the, the, the air, air dryer for the uh, air brakes. So I tried to cover this whole thing with, uh, with uh, footage, uh, video footage, but it didn't work out well. Uh, there is uh, quite a few footage I can't use for the video, so that's why up front, you know, a little bit of explanation because the video footage is not that much, right? So uh, also when I was driving the truck, I was not filming anything because yeah, I don't want to hold the camera, that's for sure not, right? That's uh, kind of getting expensive nowadays, right? <laughs> if you get caught. So just to explain a little bit, you know, what you see in this video, uh, basically I left, ho left my house here with the truck and then we went to the workshop. Uh, we uh, first we uh, changed all liquids, let's say uh, all the oils. Yeah, uh, not all liquids because we did uh, we did not change the coolant, but all oil, like the engine oil, we changed, and we changed the transmission oil. We changed the axle oil, front and rear, and the the central the central transmission, like the distributing uh, transmission. Uh, we changed oils there as well. We didn't get to the hubs because it was yeah, just taking too long. Uh, emptying, the, draining the oil is a quick, quick thing, right? But putting it back in is a little bit awkward because of the position where the, the filling hole is. You need to have a funnel with a curved hose and then you pour it in and then it goes slow. Uh, in, a, in a professional shop, they have a pump. They pump the oil in. It doesn't take really long to do that. But if you do it by gravity, it takes forever. So that's why it added on and added on to the day and then the yeah, day gets longer, you know, and we had almost no time for the uh, twisting test, the articulation test, right? So, but we made it and a little bit of footage is uh, to see here in this video. And then on the following day on, so we did it on Thursday, all the maintenance and the twist. And on Friday last week, I went on to a scale and then uh, I was planning to go 15, 20K just to fill up the diesel tank. Uh, not filling up, I mean, uh, fill up a diesel tank is an investment nowadays, you know. <laughs> but put an indecent amount of diesel into the tanks in both of them so I can see in the meter that they work accurate, right? Uh, but this uh, fuel station where I planned to go to was so plugged up, there was no space, and I just decided to keep going and put another 20K on top of it. So I went one way, 40K, and I'm back in total 80K. So yeah, that's what I did. And I really enjoyed the drive. Uh, honestly, I could have kept going, you know, like just go somewhere, but uh, yeah, it's no habitat in the back, right? So all this is to see in this video and it starts right now. Today I parked my regular car in the back. Our shelter's right there. I fired up the machine because we're going today to do an articulation test. So yeah, follow me along and we will twist that frame. We're going to change all fluids, gear oil, engine oil, and I just changed the air filter, nice and shiny. So the old one looks pretty bad, to be honest. I don't know, to me, to me it does. Uh, that and it stinks like it stinks like old old diesel oil diesel diesel uh, fuel yeah so we just drained the engine oil to fill it then the transmission then the central transmission and then both axles and if we still have some time we will do the hubs so we will see I give you an update later now we're going to change the dryer cartridge, which is right there. 
and the oil filter and the fuel filter. Okay, so Paul, can you throw a pallet underneath the rear? Yeah, so okay, uh, we lifted the rear wheel a fair, fair amount. And it's about yeah, 20 inches, 22 inches off the ground. And my frame does not move much. As you can see over there, it's maybe up by two, two inches. Right? That's kind of. So now I put pallets underneath the rear and I lift up the front or I twist even more. Well, that is. Quite twisted. Holy moly. <laughs> so here we have now significant more. That's about three, three and a half inch. So what is that? Three and a half inch is close to yeah, 100 yeah. millimeter, right? Yeah. 100 mil. They are tight, but they still have some room to play here, to go. That's fine. The frame works. The frame works actually pretty good. Now we lifted it at the front even more. Uh, it's a fairly amount up and up there. Uh, it's a, that's a good twist. <laughs> that's a good twist. You know, um, imagine you go a lot. Um, you know, I don't want to go extremely off roading, you know, but I'd be up here a foot and down there a foot, you know, like you go through stuff like that. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I know, I know now that the frame can make it. Oh, yeah. You know, because you see here, this is the worst spot. Here, I'm here now. Do we have something to measure? Do we have something to measure? I hear up now four inches at the front. We still four still inches. Crush the springs, right? No, the springs are still. They still have a little bit of room. Yeah, I can go good. another foot or something. I get this has some some uh, yeah. way in it. It's not compressed com all the way, and this is not compressed all the way. No, that's good. So I adjusted the springs pretty good, you know. So. I don't have to do anything. It works the way it is. Excellent. Excellent. Doesn't look weird. Uh, it doesn't look extreme, but it is quite twisted. See where the leg is here? <laughs> yeah. Okay, good enough. So, today, the two of us go and onto the scale and see what the uh, truck um, weighs with yes. the yes. chassis yes. only so we're going on the scale to find out what the truck weighs just the chassis with the subframe without the habitat before we are uh, installing the habitat on the back I want to know uh, what the empty weight is. So, yo, let's go. So, I just came back from that trip. We went uh, on the scale. You could see my truck has a weight of, uh, it was an empty weight, um, no, no, not much diesel in it. So it was uh, 6,910 kilo. <clears throat> Sorry. 6,910 kilogram means so t seven ton with the half ton uh, subframe. So the empty weight would be six and a half ton. It's, a, it's slightly heavier than I thought and anticipated because I thought I, I would be below six ton, but it's okay. So it seems like I will end up with about 10 ton with the habitat. We will see. Uh, in two weeks, I'm planning to put this habitat on 
and then I'm driving up on the scale again and, and weigh it in total with the habitat. So this is of course without water and stuff like that, but uh, at least I know the total weight of the habitat and the truck then. Yeah, so I also chose to keep going from the that recycle station where they have a scale. I picked a gas station which was 40 kilometers uh, far away and I drove all the way out there just to see how he behaves, you know, um, does everything work and we just came back now. So I just put an 80, 80 kilometers on it and everything works like a charm. It's, it's awesome. I, I, I would admit if the, something doesn't work, but uh, uh, first I thought I have a slightly shaken on the steering wheel because of the bigger tires. But you know, when I was going faster and the street was uh, in good condition, it, it went away. So it went away and then later on it didn't came back. So it's all good. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed that little bit of footage I had. I did for sure enjoy the drive. And uh, yeah, for more, stay tuned and I will see you in the next one.